sense, yeah. right? So you think about you know farmers and country people living in an isolated place, and you might think of them in a certain way as being provincial, right? If you didn't know much about them. But what's interesting is that during the, the, the course of working on this book, I examined all of the parochial reports uh, beginning in 1870. And what's interesting about the early parochial reports is they'll say things like the number of baptisms, the number of, of communicants, and so forth. And they'll use a term we don't use today. But in the early records, they will say there are white baptisms and there are colored baptisms. Yes. And what that tells us is that this was not a segregated congregation. There was a multiracial congregation. Yes after the, uh, the Civil War, which may be a surprise to some people. But multiculturalism is not something particularly new or, or, or um, a rare. There is in our church's collective history, there is a rector uh, who uh, spoke with an Arabic accent, right? And Tufik his, Hariri. Tufik Hariri. And his skin might not have been as white as yours and mine, but he was a beloved vicar, beloved rector. rector for many congregations. He yeah. served for at least 10 years in Luckett's and perhaps longer in, in Percival. Right through the 20s. Yes, right through the 20s. So you can imagine at the height of um, you know, Jim Crow style yeah. you know, politics and social construction, we had this man who was not, not black, but he would have been considered colored very yeah. likely by the racial you know, uh, prejudices of the time. Uh, and he served with distinction, and he was loved by the people of his congregations. He was certainly loved at St. Peter's, and I came across some very interesting information uh, about his his te his love of teaching, and he was very much valued for that. Mm -hmm. And um, and one of the oldest members of our congregation, Brad Kilgore, mm -hmm. who was one of the he was the last of the original. Kilgore family at St. Peter's in the Latin Valley. Uh, he died. I buried him like three months ago. Mm -hmm. And he remembers he was baptized in 1925, so baptized by Tufik Hariri. Mm -hmm. And he has personal recollection of hearing Reverend Hariri's voice in his peculiar accent yes. and remembers at the dinner table as a little boy. Uh, Tufa Kariri uh, was not a fan of potatoes. It was not part of his diet growing up mm -hmm. in, in Lebanon, of course, and he never quite caught into potatoes, which are a staple here. Yes. And, uh, and he could imitate from memory the way Tufa Kariri uh, politely declined that dish at the dinner table. Quite a remarkable story from the 1920s. And it's amazing that um, you think about how big churches get and sometimes impersonal, and it was just the opposite, right, at that time. So you had the rector to your home for meals, and yes. it was a regular thing. Regular thing. It was a memorable thing. I think Tufa Kariri was a single man. Yeah. So, uh, so that would be especially the case with him. So Tufa Kariri died in 1975, and he's buried with his mother uh, on Long Island. Oh, yes, yes. So, 75. Uh, yeah, 1975. Yes. And, well, for me, I was born in 1974. It's not that long ago yeah. in, in, my, right. in, in my history. But Tufik Hariri, he was not only a, a very kind person and, and, and a memorable person, you know, he has a bit of history to him as well. When I was doing my free research, I came across a, a declaration that he signed during the citizenship process. And in that process, you're required to renounce all foreign leaders whom you may have pledged allegiance to. And so he renounced the Ottoman Emperor because the Ottoman Emperor ruled Beirut and um, was responsible, I guess, for the, the, the Turkish forces that uh, precipitated uh, Tufik's departure from yes. Lebanon during the Civil War. So he renounced the Emperor, and uh, we have a copy of that. I think it's fascinating that a priest in... The Loudoun Valley came from that experience, yes. and you know during that time, the Turkish emperor that uh, had declared a jihad that resulted in the death of a couple million Armenians and Levantine Christians. It was considered the first genocide of the modern era, and. Um, and out of that horror came Tufik Hariri to the Loudoun Valley. It's just remarkable to me that we had him. 
And he was alive during our lifetimes. Yes. Right. 1975. That was not too far away. Yes. Right. So, they really these ribbons of history really extend, you know, yeah. uh, extend far back. Thank you for watching, and please tune in tomorrow for our next episode of St. Peter's 150.